Unlike cars, the rules of driving does not apply on ships because of the simple fact that the car wheels are attached to the road and ships run over water. Turning a car is very simple. You turn the steering and once you reach the desired curve until your nose is pointing where you want to go, you straighten and move ahead. In case of ships, as it is floating, if the turn angle is kept till the nose of the ship reaches the desired curve, it may not reach the desired direction as the ship's hull will drift over the water. Hence getting the right turn on board a ship will depend on the speed of the ship, wind speed, current and most importantly if the ship is in open waters. In the recent incident of the Ever Given stuck in the Suez Canal, the investigation highlighted the bank effect as one of the causes. So what is bank effect? Before we proceed into the explanation of this phenomena, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to receive notifications for all our future posts. When a ship moves through restricted waters, it has to navigate close to the shore and other man-made structures because of limited navigable width. The shallow water and the proximity of the sides of the channel affects the ship navigation through the restricted waters. These effects cause errors in maneuvering which can lead to grounding or collision. Any ship, regardless of its size, navigating through restricted waterways is heavily affected by hydrodynamic effects. We will understand the most common effects experienced by ships, squat and bang effects. Before we move ahead, let's understand some of the basic principles of physics we will be using to understand these effects. Consider a horizontally placed hourglass shaped transparent cylinder. Let us make an arrangement wherein water passes through that cylinder which is partially constricted at the middle as shown in the figure. What do you notice? You will notice that the liquid flows at a faster pace in the constructed area. Why does this happen? There is an equation in physics that is known as the continuity equation which states that when a fluid is in motion, it must move in such a way so that the mass is conserved. This means that in a continuous flow of fluid the mass of the fluid passing through the cross section at point A will be equal to that passing through point C or B. To make this happen, the rate of flow of water at constricted point C must be more than that at A or B. This also means that the velocity of flow at the constricted point is always greater, so as to satisfy the continuity equation. The next is Bernoulli's principle, which states that for an inviscid flow, which means flow of an ideal fluid that has no viscosity, an increase in speed of the fluid, that is its kinetic energy, occurs simultaneously with a decrease in pressure or decrease in its potential energy and vice versa. Actually, this principle is the corollary of the law of conservation of energy, which says the sum total of all the energies in an isolated system always remains the same. Thus, in our first experiment of the glass tube, the increased speed at constricted point C caused a decrease in pressure at that point. Without going into any more mathematical complexities, let us now first understand the squat effect. Let us consider the ship is plying in restricted waters. When a ship is plying in shallow water, if Z and Z dashed be the underwater clearance at fore and aft respectively, Z is greater than Z dashed. Thus clearance under the keel at point A is greater than at point B. Now from the continuity equation, we know that the velocity of water it is considered to be non-viscous and incompressible at the stern is greater than that of the bow or simply the flow is asymmetric. But Bernoulli's principle tells us that with increase in speed of flow at B, there is a decrease of all round pressure at B, which means that at B, the stern of the ship will sink further and may touch the channel bed. This is known as squat effect, which increases with the speed of the vessel. Thus, to minimize squat, the pilot or the master of the ship has to maintain slow speed. Bank effect. Till now we have considered the keel's proximity to the river or channel bed. Now we will consider the hull's proximity to the bank. We see the ship is close to the stern on the port side, while the starboard side is wide open. When the ship plies with considerable speed parallel to the bank, water flow rushing below from the vicinity of the port bow towards the stern gets bottled at the constricted space at the stern, but to satisfy the continuity equation, its speed increases below the port quarter. This increase of the speed of the passing water decreases the pressure at the ZP zone than the ZS zone on the starboard quarter. 
Consequently, water pressure at the starboard quarter will push the stern more towards the bank, making the bow swing towards the center of the channel. This effect of stern moving towards the bank is called the bank effect. A pilot while maneuvering near a bank must slow down to minimize this effect and take the help of a rudder to counter it as best as he can. So it can be said that the Suez bank effect might be one of the primary reasons for the recent Suez Canal blockage.